the Hudson Valley with Frank, Custer, Bruce Gallery, and every, all the artists that contributed to the work and supported the display, all those that Juan Paul Patrick and Kino Rodriguez, who uh, did an amazing job pulling all this together. Um, yeah. yeah. It was really and also, uh, um, the people who came up uh, from Occupy Wall Street, uh, NYCPA, Arts and Culture, uh, and the group that I'm with, which is Occupy with Art, it was, it was really an amazing effort. At this point, it's already involved hundreds or so people. Uh, and uh, this town has had some, I wrote about this for the paper that Paul Smart put together. I uh, used it in the French version of something I wrote for the Brooklyn Rail at this point with this issue um, about what the motivation was for doing this, this uh, festival here. Um, so, like I said, I wrote this a couple of days ago when we were up here visiting uh, in preparation for this. It was for some friends of mine, Jason, Jason Forrest, Williams, uh, and a few others that were reading it to Scotty yesterday. I had to bow out uh, so I could cover Juan's class over at SBA, which is a real joy to do. Um, but I, what that meant is I got to save it for tonight, and I hope, uh, hope you like it. <coughs> One, we articulate, celebrate, codify, and pronounce free speech as a spiritual action and incitement, mindful of those people who remain enslaved, wrongfully imprisoned, and subject to the tyranny of the voice. Free speech insists on liberation. I don't know why I'm choked up. It's a beautiful moment. Illumination and realization for all. Men, women of all races and creeds. And most importantly, for the generations of us to come. Free speech is a commitment to this and them, to us. Equality, brother and sister of freedom. We know something that somehow the free speech can activate these alliances of the hearts of people, animate them, invigorate them, revitalize them. When free speech is reduced to an abstract concept, theory, proposal, or any other subject of interrogation, when it is divorced from humanity by any means, force, or device, it is murdered by reduction. Free speech can be starved, slayed, abused, crushed, etc., just like a person, because free speech is essential to every one of us, even those of us who have yet to voice a free word for whatever reason. We need no one to speak for us, yet there is nothing sweeter than when free speech is so true that the people of the heart, by choice of their own will, repeat a free speech amongst themselves as a, harmonized, a harmonizing power, as a chorus, as a remembrance situated in the here and now. This is how free speech carries forward. Like mighty check. We are the mighty nine percent. We are the mighty nine percent. For this is what democracy looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Entire nations, civilizations, histories, and movements have arisen from the unified voices of people. But only a few that we know of today have emerged from the medium of free speech. Two, free speech is courage. It is the call of the burning heart, a calling in and of itself. It can form its poetry a final declaration from the dying body housing a still living soul, a mortal coil unfurling, a cry of victory in the battle midst 
in the midst of time. Free speech is humanity expressing itself in the presence of the infinite, for all, for now, for what matters. It is therefore material and immaterial simultaneously, and as such not art as object. But without free speech no art can form, and the best art is a herald of free speech, its handmaiden, its lover, its progeny, its jewel. Free speech is the second origin of art. Both are of the people, by the people, for the people, when they are not artificial or otherwise negated or projected as an illusion, a falsehood, a lie. Lies like Citizens United and Free Speech, which is a derivative of money, the blood furnace of extraction and exploitation complexes, or lies like 90% of what is on view at the Whitney right now, or was scrabbled together for all the New York art fairs earlier this month. Bakery, designed to enslave, imprisoned, or buttress therapy. It is important to know the difference. And art and free speech are coupled because art makes free speech visible, the way smoke makes breath visible. That is why despots always attack art at the beginning of their campaigns against freedom. That is why when and where art is enslaved or destroyed, soon enough thereafter, as the despotic campaign progresses, no one will speak freely, and tyranny will reign. Three. Real free speech can be done by anyone, meaning any real person, any time, meaning all the real time, no matter what else might be happening or not happening, and no matter who else might hear. Free speech is not that like that tree in the forest falling. Free speech rises, and we the people ever rise with it. So on this beautiful day, one that will never be repeated ever. In this unique moment, a few gather to speak freely, mindfully from the heart, in the spirit of the 99%. But really, insisting that this world is for all of us to share. What is read and said may sound like something else, a story, a declaration, a song, a poem, a history, a document, but in this moment, we are creating a special space for free speech in the belly of the beast. This was meant to be read at Liberty Square. I'm not about <laughs> <laughs> Look around you now. Picture yourself as you've got your heart. Liberty Square. Look around you now. Do you feel free? Does this place, Liberty Square, exist at this minute in a free space? If not, what will we commit to do to change these conditions? Will we surrender to slavery? Will we submit to our shackles? Will we bow to tyranny and all this putrid, horrid, terrifying, brutal, soul-crushing manifestation? Whatever else we might do to reduce the destruction of our individual and collective commonwealth freedoms, we can make a start by speaking freely here and now. Maybe you think this is optional. It is. It is voluntary. Maybe you are skeptical about the point of the exercise. Fair enough. We have evidence at hand not for the purposes of convincing, but for the purposes of informing. Think of it as a past present proposition. If you had any reservations, if you thought that free speech was in fact free here, Keep in mind what happened when a few of us got together to speak freely at Liberty Square on September 17, 2011, and the days after. That Bloomberg and the cops and the all the one percent and their proxies and cronies and henchmen and lackeys conspired to obviate that speech, that gathering, to distort, erase, obliterate, diminish, revise, misrepresent it, to silence it forever, to force through control, through violence, through lies and liars. I would of my own free will say, based on these facts, the Bluebirds at all, they are terrorists, and on the whole, they hate us for our freedom. A suggestion, 
If you must occupy somewhere something, make free speech your occupation. A reminder, no two human voices are exactly the same like snowflakes, like stars, like fingerprints, like everything in time, except for the artificial things, but even they cannot escape what is real and free, eventually. And even they will mutate or disappear over time, for time is relentless to its subject, those who are not as yet liberated. Thank you.